another small story I'll use here to explain something is that a lot of parts of um, the music we hear now in modern media and in mainstream music come from all kinds of different genres and backgrounds. Manakkam, greetings to all. Every day we gather here to conduct powerful meditation for global peace, harmony, unity, peace of mind, health and well-being. It, bring, brings, it brings me great pride to announce that we have reached milestone of 1,100 day, consecutive days of online meditation sessions. Each day we conduct three meditation sessions. <clears throat> uh, that is uh, at, uh, starting at 9.30 a.m., 11 a.m. and 12, uh, sorry, uh, 8 p.m. 8 p.m. We extend our heartfelt gratitude to all those who have contributed to this remarkable achievement, including Meditation for World Peace and Harmony Forum, PSSM Tamil Europe, PSSM Global, and the participants who have joined us in these sessions. Today's program begins with 15 minutes of music meditation. Uh, after that, 15 minutes of silence meditation, followed by a keynote address by our guest speaker, Eranan Thirumagan, who will enlighten us on emotional language of music. A summary of his speech will be presented in Tamil by Kumar Sami Pule Master from Sydney, Australia. Today's meditation music provided by Eran and Thirumagan from Swansea. Thank you very much indeed. Today, uh, Arundhati Master will conduct this uh, uh, meditation. Thank you very much. Greetings to all. The purpose of meditation is to train our mind and to use it effectively and efficiently in our daily life. Meditation can help us to get rid of tension and to find relaxation. Meditation can calm and help us to find peace of mind. It doesn't require a specific spiritual belief. Anyone can practice meditation. It's very easy to practice. One needs to be mindful of our natural breath. Breathing should be natural. Just breathe in and out. When we are with our breath, our mind becomes empty. Once our mind becomes empty, the cosmic energy starts entering into our body. Our performance level will increase and we will be able to deal very effectively with any situation in our life. Now we will get into meditation. Take any comfortable posture. If you are wearing glasses, please remove and keep it aside. Drink lukewarm water before and after meditation to avoid dryness of your throat. Sit comfortably, cross your feet like that. Interlock your fingers and place it on your lap. Gently close your eyes and observe your normal, natural breathing. There is no need for any deep breathing. Focus on your easy, natural breathing. Whenever thoughts come, please come back to your natural breathing. Relax the body, keep the body still. More relax your physical body you more go deeper into your meditation. There will be a background music to relax your mind. Thank you.
Take your hands and place your palm on your eyes. Five, four, three, two, one. Now remove your hands and look into your palm and clap your hands for the wonderful meditation we've done today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. We thank everyone who took part in joint meditation today, focusing on peace of mind, psychological healing, and for world peace and harmony with blessings of the cosmic power. When we meditate jointly, it helps to generate a social force that spreads across all nations around the world to promote peace and harmony and in general well-being to everyone around the world. Our sincere thanks to Arundhati Sri Kandaraja from London who conducted the meditation today and for the Eranan's calming music for meditation provided by Anandi Master from Canada and also Bhavani Vignesh Master from Doking, Surrey. Uh, to recording, uh, recording this event. And to everyone who participated in joint meditation today, we wish to express our gratitude to PSSM Tamil Europe, PMC Tamil TV for sponsoring this forum for joint meditation three times a day, UK time, 9 a.m., 11 a.m. and 8 p.m. Today's speaker is a uh, uh, Erinan Thirumagan. I am delighted to introduce Erinan Thirumagan. Erinan is a freelance composer and who, <coughs> orchestrator who has been involved in the musical world from a young age, starting at just seven years old. His musical journey began in primary school with the violin and he added the piano to his <coughs> repertoire a few years later. He has performed with various orchestras from his local West Glamorgan touring with the National Youth Orchestra of Wales. Erinan pursued a music degree focused on composition initially at Cardiff University and later at Leeds College of Music. His Compos uh, compositional practice uh, in composers, both media and concert performance. Without further ado, please welcome Erin and Trimagan to speak about the emotional language of music. Thank you very much, Erin and Trimagan. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Is this work? Yes. Thank you for that. Lovely. Uh, presentation and uh, introduction. Hello, everyone that's here. Now, I'll begin in just a moment. I want to raise a few discussing points. One of those is that most of this is going to be presented as more something that I'll be discussing throughout, and I want other people to sort of ponder over the different things I'll be mentioning. Nothing I'm mentioning here is intended to be inherently factual or objective. That's one of the beautiful things about music is that it's open to interpretation. So everything that I'm going to be talking about here it comes from my own language and my own understanding of music. Um, so any other forms of understanding it, any other examples and ways aren't invalidated by the things that I'm going to be talking about here, um, which is kind of the point. I'll begin with uh, three statements, <clears throat> some of which you might agree with, some of which you might not, and uh, I'll explore them further. One, the first one, is that music is not a universal language. It's commonly thought to be, but in my humble opinion, that isn't the case. Second statement is that music is not inherently emotional. 
seems like an odd thing to say considering the uh, title of the presentation and talk, but that is the following part. And the last statement I want to mention here is that despite the first thing, first two things I said, music is a fundamental part of uh, human ecology and human nature. So to elaborate further on what I meant when I said that music isn't a universal language, and also the point about music not being inherently emotional. When we think of emotional language, we don't always consider how it's being conveyed. We often think of the emotion at hand and how we experience that emotion. If you compare two different people who um, say, for example, they two different people who have gotten angry. Anger is an intense emotion. However, those two people will convey and express that anger in different ways. Some people choose to lash out and let that anger out on everyone and everything around them. Some people choose to contain it and instead end up letting that anger work on themselves. And some people will choose instead to resolve that anger by thinking through the parts of what brought them to that emotion in the first place. The thing is here, in this case, the point of getting angry isn't an inherently bad thing. A lot of people think it is, and I don't think it is. I think the important point is how you convey and how you resolve that anger afterwards. This is the point I was trying to make understood when I brought up that music isn't inherently emotional and music isn't a universal language. Music is usually a message of something that the composer, the performer or the writers are trying to say and then the listeners and the audience will try to understand. It doesn't mean that what the composer originally tried to say is exact in the music. What I mean, by, uh, what I mean more by this is that some forms of music, like the meditative, uh, the meditative music that I brought up earlier, that piece is something I still don't understand. I wrote it which, you know, for me to say that I don't understand it sounds a bit crazy, but the point is that I was using music to convey something that I couldn't fully quantify or explain in words. This is something that you'll find that's quite beautiful about a lot of this artistry is that it's music gives you ways and forms to express yourself that words and other actions just can't really compare against. Another small story I'll use here to explain something is that a lot of parts of um, the music we hear now in modern media and in mainstream music come from all kinds of different genres and backgrounds. Those backgrounds and experiences are usually what define how that music is being understood. If the music is coming from a more Western background, the things that you hear in that music, they might be emotionally similar in where they're coming from. What the composer is trying to say might be the same as a composer from an Eastern background. However, the way that which they will say that particular message will end up coming out different or it'll be sounding different. It's the same as some of us who speak in English, some of us who speak in Tamil and all the different languages that we have in the world. That's part of who we are and where we've come from. And the music and artistry you'll find from all kinds of different places in the world are unique to those places. And that's an incredibly beautiful thing. It's a, it's 
it's a wonderful way to experience how other people understand emotions, how other cultures understand those emotions. And you wouldn't really find that kind of expression in in uh, places outside of music and other forms of art. That uniqueness is what keeps music as non uh, as a not universal language and not inherently emotional either because the listener's interpretation to the music is actually the important part of what the listener will believe and feel from uh, what's being said to them in that music. It's not always the case, especially when we listen to music and perform music from composers that are long dead, that we're going to understand exactly what they intended when they wrote that music for other people to listen to and other people to perform. Instead, we try to derive a certain emotional understanding from that music using what we know and our own experiences with other forms of music that we've grown up with. In that sense, you could say also that everyone's own musical language and their own emotional language in music is unique to them. Which honestly is quite an impressive thing because you can't really find that kind of expression and that kind of open interpretation in expression in many other forms of art. You find it more in abstract art in the modern days, but not as much in musical art forms. One of the interesting topics I'll bring up here is um, a story of a classical composer from the early 20th century, uh, Dmitry Shostakovich. Uh, this composer is contemplated and argued upon in a lot of academic circles uh, in the modern day because some of his works are quite divisive in how different people understand them. There's a lot of discourse over whether or not some of his later pieces, his later symphonies, were meant to be uh, a statement against the world and world state of his time, or whether or not he was pandering to the people of his time. In this case, if we take the fact that he was living under the reign and rule of uh, Joseph Stalin at his time, and a lot of the a lot of the later parts of his works weren't allowed to explore um, expression in the way that he wanted to. Stalin was very adamant on bringing a lot of patriotic and uh, sort of those uh, like self worshipping uh, virtues in music, and he wanted the composers under his rule to bring those kind of sentiments out in the people um, as they wrote their pieces. Not all of the people who were living under his reign wanted or understood that or even really believed in that. So when uh, Shostakovich was coming around to his ninth symphony, the ninth symphony in Western classical music spheres is reported to have a lot of significant meaning. So many of the ninths of famous composers past, Beethoven's ninth, Mahler, Wagner, are huge, bombastic and strong pieces of music. They're meant to bring out all of the glory that is within that form of, uh, that form of sound. But because that kind of expression was forced upon Shostakovich, he instead chose to subvert those emotions in his piece. That was something that still so many people don't fully understand. They don't really have a defined form of whether or not he was trying to go against the teachings and practices of that Soviet rule or whether he was trying to conform to them. 
This is due to all the different ways that his music could be interpreted and all of the different emotional sentiments that were coming out of uh, the music of his time. Another thing to consider is the part of music being a fundamental to human ecology and nature. There is almost no single culture in the world across history that hasn't had some form of music or dance within their cultures. Music is something that's natural to how human beings need to express their emotions. Same, uh, in the same way that we have these kinds of sessions of meditation to convey that kind of power and spirit to the rest of the world, music is a way for a single person to convey and express that emotion to anyone else that's around them. That kind of uniqueness and that kind of beauty is something that we'll always have with music, but it's not something that is always going to be understood in the same way. Most of the, so most of the rest of what I have presented here was intended to be as an open discussion. Um, I didn't actually realize how many people would be attending this session. So some of the rest of the form of this might not be best to present as I am here. I'd like to ask if uh, Sri Kandaraj uncle would uh, be willing to open the floor to some earlier questions, since um, most of what I brought up and discussed was intended for people to respond to and uh, have that kind of conversational nature to it. Anyway, first of all, thank you very much, Hiran uh, and uh, Tirumagan, for your uh, uh, very enlightening speech. Let us show, first of all, we appreciate for efforts with a round of applause. Please applaud for 30 seconds, all of us. After that, Khan Koganesan will ask a question. Thank you very much indeed. Now, Ken Koganation, Master from Chim Sari. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, what a wonderful speech. Thank you. Um, I have been experiencing listening to preferred music like SM and Tamil. I normally listen to Pandisai. You might have heard. Uh, it is like the Thirvaram, Thirvasaram, so and so all the time. Um, maybe more effective way to reduce feelings of stress and perhaps fatigue. All I want to ask is, as a question, how does music affect the way we think, we feel and behave? Thank you very much. If you can, I mean, if I can repeat the question again, how does music affect the way we think, we feel, we behave? Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, that's a good question. In terms of how music will affect the way we uh, feel and behave, that's going to be, as you mentioned, dependent on where that music comes from and where you as the listener come from. So with the music that you mentioned from uh, our Southeast Asian Dervarams, those pieces are going to bring feelings of love for God, feelings of tranquility, feelings of peace within the people who are experienced and Whoever, who have experienced the music before and understand it, that kind of meaning behind it. If you present that music towards people who haven't 
had those experiences with that uh, type of music, you might not necessarily have the same feelings or the same uh, behaviors when you hear it. So a lot of it comes from how we were essentially taught to understand music. The music that you listen to as you grow up, especially from your childhood, is going to inform how you understand and interpret the rest of the music that you're going to hear in the future. I hope that helps uh, answer your question there. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Karaman. Uh, now, Dr. Navaradnam, Master, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Aranan. You've got a lovely Tamil name, Thirumagan. Thank you. Aranan, from Wales. Obviously, we were brought up, born and brought up in Wales. And uh, I can see you have spoken about the theory of music. And uh, it's, a, it's a serious talk rather mm -hmm. than what normally people think about music. Certainly, I appreciate what you have said. But on the other hand, we, the Tamils uh, in, from India and Sri Lanka, are used to listening to uh, Carnatic music, which has been evolving over the last three centuries. Kagrajar and uh, the Trinity. Now, the, we believe that music uh, comes in with seven swaras. Seven. Sa, Sa, Ri, Gama, Pada, Nisa. And, and all ragas, all music can be interpreted within those seven swaras. Now, that is... And uh, I've been a lover of music and I listen to music every day before I go to bed and it does calm, have a calming effect on my mind and body. But I just want to ask you whether in your experience, do you think this seven swaras are something that you again think when you play your music? I know you are not a you don't seem to be a vocalist. You are more an instrumentalist. Uh, piano being your vehicle. Kindly explain that to me. Thank you. Okay, so to summarize quickly again, um, your question is asking about whether I believe and understand the seven swaras of uh, Carnatic music and whether I think and um, sort of interpret music from my experiences in that way. Is that what you're asking? Yes, yes. So I don't necessarily think of the, the Carnatic Svaras in the music and my forms of writing. The reason for this is because I didn't study Carnatic music when I was uh, originally growing up. I did when I was very young, but I didn't have access to those kinds of lessons once we moved from London to Swansea. So I usually think of music in using the Western scale systems. However, a lot of what my personal practice of writing involves studying music from many different cultures. A lot of my rhythmic writing follows a lot of forms that are drawn out of the uh, Carnatic Tala system as well. Um, some of it's interpreted a little bit differently so that I'm not quite strict to the rules, but some of it is interpreted um, quite closer to the rules that form up that system. I think when it comes to different composers and different uh, performers, they're probably going to go with whatever system that they're most familiar with. However, when they're working with music of a different culture, so if I was to play actual Carnatic music, it would help to think within the form and system, the, the theory system that Carnatic music uses, because that is the language of Carnatic music, and that's the language how which all of the pieces and songs are formed. So I think that's more, it's, uh, once again, it's part of the language that the composer has been brought up with and what language is needed to understand and sort of uh, flow through 
to perform that piece of music. Thank you for that explanation. I also know that music is organized sound. Mm -hmm. uh, and the sound has got two parts. One is the melody and the rhythm. And in the Western and Eastern system, the rhythm is similar. So you say mm -hmm. tala. You've got to have tala to make the organized sound like, sound like music. But the melody is that that's different. The Western melody is different. Whereas Ule Raja, I don't know whether you've heard of him, in mm -hmm. India, tried to combine the Western style and Carnatic music and tried to create some music. I don't think it was that successful, but that is one attempt by Ule Raja, the current, one of the current musicians in India, trying to join up the Western instruments while singing Carnatic music. And if you have any comments, you can otherwise thank you. I think it's interesting. So what I've noticed from studying Carnatic music and a few other forms is that a lot of, as you mentioned, this the melodic structuring, but also the rhythmic structuring is linear. What I mean by this is the melodies that are formed in Carnatic music are parts of phrases that form a whole. They don't focus on crafting things note by note because that doesn't go uh, that does that goes against the system of the raha in place. If you pick and choose the notes all willy nilly, you're going against uh, the raha that's uh, formed that song. Western music doesn't work in this manner. Western music chooses to give you the choice of the set of notes. However, there is no linear uh, set structure for the direction that the melody or the rhythm needs to move in. So Western music is often actually structured vertically. You're thinking step by step, chord by chord, a structure that we have in Western music rather than the linear whole of the melody. It's, I wouldn't necessarily say it's um, like one way is more correct or the other. I think it's more just the, the form of what's come out of the instruments and the way of playing. Western music needed to adapt a more vertical structure because orchestras, performance ensembles got larger and larger. We're talking 30, 60 people trying to play together to play a, a, a full piece of music. Uh, whereas in Carnatic uh, traditions, you don't usually see ensembles of that size. So the music can focus on more complexity in that linear structure. Thank you. That's another thing. The Hindustani music mm -hmm. is a bit different from Carnatic music. Do you think Hindustani music and Western music have got something closer than Carnatic music? Sadly, I don't have that much experience studying uh, Hindustani music. I haven't researched into it much yet myself, but I am keen to, to, to research it and approach it in the future to try and understand it. So unfortunately, I can't comment on that as of now. Thank you. Thank you so much. Other people are here to ask questions. Thank you so That's much. Fine. Thank you very much, Dr. Navarandaman, Yaranan Thirumagan. Thank you. After, uh, now, Arundhati Srikandaraja, Master from London. Greetings to all masters. Thank you very much, Hiranan, about your explanation about music. Uh, uh, and uh, music is natural to express their feeling or about one individual's feeling and emotional. And uh, I would like to ask you, because as a Carnatic musician, I, um, I do play the veena and as a vocalist, uh, I I say that um, even though that Tyagaraja great composers, uh, what they have composed, uh, you said when somebody composed the music, there's not the same feeling. They won't, they don't get it because as that they are old. But when when we come to this Carnatic music, when the Tyagarajas or great composer who have composed the music, and we get the same feeling, even though they have composed and they have gone, but when we see, when we hear the music, we can go deeper into that music, how they have, you know, produced their music in that way. So I would like to know, and you said music is not an international language, 
but uh, I don't know whether I can, uh, I wanted to know to expand on that because I think it's an international language in point of my view, because the music, anybody who listens to any type of music or emotional or devotional music, when we listen, we all go deeper in it. For example, today your music that you produce, that is you said that your own music, but when we meditated, we go deeper into the meditation because the way you presented that music, it took us somewhere. So uh, that's what I don't understand why music is not international language. Can you expand on that, please? So the it's that's a very good point, and I I understand entirely where you're coming from with this. When I was I was actually presented this that statement that music isn't a universal language by one of my lecturers when I first began studying in Cardiff. I didn't. It took me years to fully come to terms and understand what they were trying to tell me or the point they were trying to make. What I mean by the universe, the lack of universal language is that. It's music is very in specific points. It's very defined by the, like we uh, spoke about earlier with um, the kind of theory that goes behind music with the Carnatic system and the Western system being so different. That theory is kind of, if you think of it the same way we think of spoken languages, the words, that theory forms the words that are being said. The meaning in the words I'm speaking right now is something everyone else can understand here. However, for the people who don't speak English, they might not necessarily understand the specifics of what I'm saying. If I started shouting angrily, for example, they could understand that I am angry, but they wouldn't be able to understand why or what I'm saying in those words. That's the point I was trying to make. It's not exactly a solid um, and tangible kind of idea. It's more that because a lot of different cultures, they are, they understand different parts of emotions in a in a sort of different way. Um, a comparison is actually again with Shostakovich and a lot of Eastern European art forms. Uh. You will see this in some older Eastern European uh, films. Their understanding of a a desolate and despairing setting, so something that in our culture we think of as kind of sad or horrible events is very different from how Western films would portray it. Eastern films portray um, a depressing setting in a way that you're supposed to focus on those small points of light and those small points of peace and hope and happiness between all of the rest of the horrible things around you. A Western film interpreting that idea would instead look to get rid of the depressing form and focus on the light they're doing the same thing they're both focusing on the peaceful happy thoughts but the way they understand that peaceful happiness in the world around them is different so that's um if that was clear that was a little bit rambly uh that is the kind of idea behind it it's very esoteric it's a very intangible sort of um concept so sometimes i'll be stumbling over words trying to get it out but if you if you, if you, that analogy about um, like direct language, if we're comparing like English and Tamil, I think that's a closer way to understand it. You can understand some of the emotional baseline of what the composer is trying to say, but you not, might not always understand the exact points of that message if you aren't familiar with that musical language. Okay, thank Hope you so answers. much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, anyway, because it's a very, it's a vast difference between Carnatic and Western music. So it's really difficult to understand uh, because the music is a very, you know, as I say, it's an international, uh, but you present it as not an international language. Uh, but it's, there is so much difference in between Western classical and Carnatic music and Hindustan music. So it's, it depends on every individual how they, you know, take it. Anyway, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank, you, thank you. you. You composed a beautiful music for the meditation. You find any connection between the music and the meditation? So this is something that's quite interesting to bring up. Um, 
I, I pointed out earlier when I spoke about the, I was using it as an example. I don't actually fully, I don't have clear words with which I can describe what I meant when I was writing that piece of music. When I was arranging, I understand what I was doing technically when I was arranging the files, moving the things around, controlling the volume. But the final part of what I was trying to say is still something that I'm slowly understanding over time. And in my view of uh, musical language, I think that's perfectly fine and valid. Like I, it wasn't intended to say something very specific. It was in, intended for me to be able to express an emotion into that music. And then whatever other people understand from that music is, you know, uh, what they want to, to get out of it. Anyway, thank you very much. Next, we have uh, Panjai Chiram Master from Sydney, Australia. Thank you. Uh, greeting to all. Uh, today, Mr. Iran Thirumahan has given us uh, a very good understanding of the music. Uh, but he has touched, uh, I am. I want to ask a uh, uh, little bit uh, different to this. Uh, you have touched this point. Is this music change character of a human or animal or change character or he change health or making extraordinary according to the our Eastern the, the mandram is in music that mandram can make create many things it's like this do you have uh, anything in english uh, western music also do they say anything about this this is yes this this exists in the western forms you'll see it um you'll see it happen in a lot of the music that's played in church structures these beautiful huge cathedral halls you you get a very defined feeling when music is played there. You'll see it when you when you hear a concert orchestra perform live. You'll see it and hear it when you hear a rock band perform live. There's a, there's a reason why when you see concerts of modern mainstream artists, the reason the crowds are so excited, the reason the people who go there love that artist, love that band, love that music is because of what it makes them feel. In that same way, it might not be described and spoke and spoken about in the same way as uh, as it is in the southeastern traditions, but that phenomenon definitely exists in all musical music traditions. It's yeah. it's something okay. that's yeah that's that's everywhere. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Next, we have a uh, Samuel Master from Sydney, Australia. Uh, greetings to all. Firstly, I would like to thank Renan for your very informative speech. And, and at the start, you mentioned that music is not a universal language, but I wish to differ from that because from one point of view, know, music is normally either arrangement of words sung or played on instruments. Now, when you come to instruments, the instruments, you know, sometimes when you listen to any form of instrument, anybody can understand that music. For example, mm -hmm. a violin has almost become a universal instrument that even Westerners, they appreciate that we have got so many musical instruments. So music is actually, the intention is different when a person is unhappy. When you listen to some soothing music, for example, when we are in meditation, we listen to that. Now we have certain amount of peace of mind, so that can anybody can experience, irrespective of their caste, race, or religion. So, in my opinion, it is really the instrumental basically. It is a universal language. So, do you agree with me yeah. or on that? I, I do understand um, your point, and you are correct in that form. Uh, so. This is, this is actually why I wanted to make these statements, because I wanted this kind of discussion. It's an interesting thing to think about. Uh, the, the statement of that lack of universal language is, it's meant to surround how the interpretations for different listeners will be different. You chose the violin as an example. 
how the violin is tuned and played in Carnatic music is different from how the violin is tuned and played in Western music. I'm a violinist myself, and I did have some lessons with um, uh, a Carnatic violin teacher for a short while, and the experiences I had there were quite, ve no, they were very interesting because it's an instrument I understand. I play this instrument but I don't understand the physicality, the movement and the sound of what's happening in Carnatic music. So it's still something that's difficult to, for, me to, for me to grasp. I couldn't pick up the instrument and suddenly start playing Carnatic music fluently. So that part of universal language, it's, it's meant to be sort of like, a, it's a half and half. Yes, there is universal application to a lot of music, Again, with a violin as, a, as an example, Carnatic uh, musicians will hold the violin in a similar way to a Western musician. You use it, hold it with your left hand, you play the uh, notes by moving your fingers up and down the strings in the same way. You hold the bow in your right hand and you use the bow to make sound in that form. So that universal, uh, uni that universal aspect is the same in both. However, the specific notes themselves, the scales, the tunings, those are different. And those are the differences in the language, in a way. If we think of it in some of the languages that are in Southeast Asia, a lot of the Northern uh, Indian languages are, they are descendants of Sanskrit. A lot of their language and the words that are used there have a lot of words that come out of Sanskrit. There's words that are influenced by uh, the more sort of uh, Middle Eastern cultures of the time, Persian cultures, because of the empires that uh, ruled them in the past. And the same way some of the words that we have in Tamil, uh, especially in Sri Lankan Tamil, are taken from languages like Portuguese. So there are parts that are going to come from different places, and those are the influences that uh, have happened to that music form over time. But as a baseline, I still believe that the statement of saying that music is not a universal language is it's more of a way to get people to think and interpret how they understand music of different, different cultures and different, different genres in that sense. Now, for example, let us say Carnatic music and Hindustani music. I, mm -hmm. We don't understand Hindustani at all, but we, when the when music is played, we all enjoy it. And we have been watching Hindustani movies also. So that's yeah. the power of music, whether you understand or not, is the emotions are raised, aroused. Yes. This is the That's... role they play. Actually, when you are not happy, you go and listen to a very good classical movie. We are whether Hindustani or Tamil or Telugu, any Indian language. You really feel it. Yeah. There's an effect on our emotions. That's the beauty of like the emotional interpretation that's available in so many different forms of music. People from all kinds of cultures will be able to enjoy different musics because that interpretation is so like unique to them. In that form what well, uh, it's it's yeah it's not to say that you wouldn't be able to enjoy other cultures and other forms of music but i will bring up this point if you think of any genres of music modern uh pop music and different mainstreams if you try to think of the technical reasons or the even the emotional reasons why you do or don't enjoy the uh, all kinds of other forms think of the musics that you're not familiar with try to see where and why you don't enjoy that kind of music because there's chances are it a lot of it will tie into the fact that you didn't have that kind of experience or similar kinds of listening experiences growing up like for me one interesting point is my tie into how i started enjoying a lot of modern rock music especially even metal metal music is because the notes and the way they write their melodies is actually very very similar to really old western classical music if you took the, the, the notes from a, an electric guitar that's played in metal music and played them on a piano, it would sound like old Western classical music. So that's, that kind of beauty and that kind of difference is there in a lot of different genres. Actually, they all depend on the interests and our intentions, but why we, mm. why we listen to the music, right? Thank you for your very useful intermission. Thanks you for the, for the question. Thanks. Thank you very much. Next, we have Dr. Raghunathan from Ilford, East London. Thank you. Uh, greetings to everyone. Um, this evening, we had an interesting talk by Ranan 
Srimagan uh, about uh, music and emotional language, and you raised some interesting points as well. Uh, I think some of us found it rather paradoxical, I thought. Uh, first of all, I have two questions. Uh, what is emotional language? Is it related to emotional intelligence? Because, you know, that term of emotional intelligence has become popular now. Well, I sometimes have my own reservation about it. Uh, well, when you say international because it is common to... Uh, when you say uh, English is an international language because common among, you know, many races. So similarly, music is also enjoyed by you know, many races, even though they don't understand the language. But then it also have to emotionally, I mean, the music then synchronizes with the emotion. But having said that, we are all experienced, isn't it? When Queen Elizabeth died, or Princess Diana died, whole day, and the music was, or the, uh, whatever played was from morning. But supposedly, you won a lottery, or you you had some uh, you know, successful an exam or something. You might get irritated, isn't it? Because you want to enjoy. So in a way, the, cons the, the who are consuming the music, we must be ready to receive it. Well, another uh, color is that when I drive in traffic in city, I put classic M FM. That's the only thing I can enjoy in the city. But some people are putting you know loud rock music and driving. So I suppose it depends on person's individual say consuming it you know you must ready to receive it isn't it so yeah. i don't think we can generalize it but there's no doubt they say laughter is best medicine i say the dancing is better medicine but you can only enjoy the dancing with the music imagine dancing without the music so there you are i'm sorry there's some work going on in my neighborhood so um maybe disturbing anyway it's an interesting talk um, but there you are. Thank you for raising that point. Uh, actually, so your conclusion that you brought up there is very close to what I wanted you to understand when I was bringing these things up. It's, it's like I said at the start, I w didn't intend for the things I spoke about to be taken as absolute fact. It wasn't that the things that I was saying were the things that were correct. I was trying to bring up points for people to understand. And it's, yeah, exactly as you, as you said, you have to be ready to receive that kind of uh, music and to be able to take it in. So yeah, that's, I'm, I'm very glad that you have, you've come, you have that understanding. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Dr. Navaratnam Master, you can speak. Thank you for calling me again. I was listening, it's a very interesting discussion. And um, nobody has touched on this. That when you when we listen to music, even when animals listen to music, uh, there is a uh, there is a literature when Krishna played flute, even the cows stopped grazing and they opened their mouth and listened to Krishna's music. And th that is the effect music has got in the brain of people, of animals and human beings. Now when the music, the sound, the regulated sound, musical sound goes through our ears, it goes to the center in the brain, which is close to the uh, mind or the pineal body. And uh, hippocampus, they say, which controls our emotions and our hormones. And the good hormones are secreted. We get calming effect in the brain and body. And that is the what the universal language means. When, when I understand that any music is capable of producing this in any one in the world, uh, who listen to that music. The other thing is, um, when when an Indian classical musician came to London, the instrumental music, and the English audience listened to it in Brentwood. And these people were not used to Eastern music. But then they said they appreciated very much 
the musical content of what was played. So that shows that music can be an international language. Yes. And I suppose now we are coming to agree on that. And your comments, please. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, so the, the specifics of what I was trying to bring out there, and again, you are, uh, I do believe you are right with how you've mentioned that different animals and the music, the way the music affects people in a physical manner has a um, very similar effect among different groups. But I will also bring up a point of when we think of music like that, do we always find that calming and meditative music is what brings out those calming emotions in people? Or can it actually also be different kinds of music? I, for example, I find it quite easy to relax to, and I did this when I was younger, when I was a teenager. And, you know, during that time, your body and your emotions are all over the place. I would find ways to calm down by listening to quite intense uh, rock and rap music, as well as like quite intense classical music. For me, that would help guide my emotions, guide my heart and still me and bring me back to like kind of more of a place of peace rather than wherever I was before. So I think, yes, you are right that music can have that effect and it can have that effect universally. However, the types of music that will help different people come to that point isn't always going to be universal. If you understand where or that kind of point that I'm bringing up there. I agree. I agree. I can't Thank sleep you. with rock music. Thank you. <laughs> I can. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Next, can coordination master? Okay, thank you very much. I'm sorry to come back again. Um, That's fine. You know, something uh, I will comment on it and then uh, a personal question from you. Okay, it's a little the music. Um, you know, in, in Thiruvasaga, I told you before, there's a saying towards the end, Korul Unandu Soluvar. In other words, you need to enjoy the music to the utmost. You need to understand the language plus actual meaning. That's the way he put it. Okay, that's one. Uh, it's not my opinion. It's the opinion of Monica Vasaka. That's one point. But I'm coming to the personal one. I'm very inquisitive. By looking at your face, I want to ask you a question. Are you Mr. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Dharmaraja's grandson? Are you? Uh <laughs> Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Dharmaraja's grandson, yes. Uh, my papa okay. is uh, Dharmaraja Dhamran. Okay, um, I just want to, yeah, okay. Uh, once you, <laughs> the, the, I'll tell you something about uh, You know why I'm saying? Uh, your grandma and granddad, they were attending a long while ago with me, uh, music, sorry, uh, um, um, what do you call um, meditation classes. She, she used to come a lot, and your granddad as well. So when they were there and with me, we were listening all the time more sort of uh, Hindustani music at that time when we do meditation. Just want to point out to you, now I, my guess is perfectly right, then uh, I think possibly you need to do more on Hindustani music as well. I mean, that's all I want to say. Because she and my your granddad, when we go together with me for the meditation, in London it happened anyway, a long while ago. So they actually play Hindustani music, mostly sort of uh, North Indian based music. I just want to point out to you. So that's all I want to say. Thank you very much. So my guess is right. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Next we have Basandaraj Master from Sydney, Australia. Dr. Sada, do you want to say anything? After all, Masinaraj, not there? Mm -hmm. It's not there, I think. Mm -hmm. Greetings to all. Uh, thanks so much, Ranan, Tirumugan, for your wonderful presentation. Yeah, yeah. You have been saying everything from your own experience, and it was really nice to listen to as well. I'm not very good at uh, music aspect because I never learned music, but I always uh, enjoy listening to the music. It can be any kind of music. It doesn't matter for me. And uh, sometimes people mm -hmm. used to ask questions like, why people listen to sad songs? But I read somewhere, they are saying actually, 
when you listen to sad songs, even though you are listening to the music of verses coming sad, but actually the negative feelings are changed. Gradually, yeah. So that's what nicely they are saying. And the babies, the lullaby sang by the mother, they really, they are communicating in a way. The baby doesn't understand, but it's a sharing of their own language in a way. So from the baby stage, then school going, preschool, after school and things like that, they are de describing in different stages. Music is a wonderful thing. And I, I love music, but I never learned music. Thank you so much for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Vasandaraj Master from Sydney. Uh, and I understood that the music is uh, in my feeling. Yeah. It is an emotional language. I understood mm -hmm. that. It is touched in all the ways, even any any angle. Either it was for sorrow or it was for peace, it was for, for, for good things, for the ed entertainments in every angle, it plays a vital role. In Tamil, we will say the music is in between the drama and the speech. Yel is a Nadaka in Tamil Alakava Chulwang. Yel is a Nadaka. Now, Isavanda is between the music. Nadaka the uh, speech in Mudaila is the Dante Miruudra. It is a coordinator between drama and the music. In the same way, I feel the music is the international coordinator. International coordinator in every activities for better or in other side, even it can make. For revolution, it can make for the peace. He is uh, one of the best instruments, uh, as, as like a god. God is the best, uh, the, the, in, uh, in, the, in the Christianity, we will say there was a word in the beginning. There was a, the word became God. That is in the base of the our even the Christianity religion. The, there was a word in the beginning and the word became God and the word is God. And similarly, the is the music also. I think it's from the start. It is even as like Dr. Navarata mentioned, even the in the, the early morning, the birds is singing a very good music in different different animals and different sounds. Therefore, the sounds become a good music. It's make up to wake up for from some giving some vibration to, for the for the better. That's why even uh, I feel in my in my thinking, but it's a very important instrument. Uh, music is uh, make the people more vigilant and more happy and more active and for everything. The very very important. And those who are developing the skills is one of the best pioneer in the world. Even make the people for more for the for, for thing for the best. And I am very happy about. I think you are the one of the Tamil uh, from the tradition from the base i understood from in a, when when you because i i became to in the half one you when your speech started i hope i am very happy about because you are one of the in our same community from the base therefore you also one of the good vital player for the peace and harmony among tamils and to wake up the tamils for the better for the real real world because we are sometimes we are not in the real world. We are always for the even the education also mentioned. Education is for the evolutionary thinking, not for the revolutionary process. Because I was working in the UN when I was even no, I normally I listen most of the speakers when they were saying like this. Therefore, I hope your music, the talent, the God's given talent, and uh, and we are happy because you are the Tamil pioneer even uh, from the base from the from your talks from your what the people mentioned and understood that's why your place is very important for our community to make up than being going for the uh, not active we had to go for the we had to aware and wake up again and go for the towards for the better for the better for sri lanka better for the world better for the <clears throat> complex, as like a your instrument, I hope it will be worth better. Thank you very much for the giving opportunity for even for you and uh, to listen to your speech and thank you for the Sir Sandraja for giving this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. I'd like to read one message 
from the chat mm -hmm. box. Tara Nathan from Edgeware. Thank you so much, uh, Erin and Tirumagan. May I say that you have resembling Beatles, John Lennon. <laughs> Very Thank good. So I like you I to. It's a good look to have. I like. Uh, I like to invite you to join our group. Uh, can I put your name in our group, Young People's Group? I'd be happy to. Yeah. Be Very good. Yes, you got Thank something you. for us. Okay. So Tara and Adhan will be happy that you are joining in our group. Thank you. Next translation time. You know. So Kumar Sami Master will summarize your speech in the oldest language in the world, Tamil language. Thank you. வணக்கம் <laughs> ஒன்று வந்து இசை வந்து உலகளாவிய மொழி இல்லை இசை இல்லை என்று முதலாவது தொகுதி ரெண்டாவது பாயிண்ட் வந்து உணர்ச்சிகள் வந்து இயற்கையான சோழன தொடர்பானது இல்லை என்று சொன்னார் அடுத்தது வந்து இசை வந்து சில நேரங்களில் அடிப்படையாக சுற்றுச்சூழல் சார்ந்தவை என்ற மூன்று கருத்துக்களை எடுத்து விரிவாக்கி கொண்டு போய் அது பல விதானங்களை எடுத்துட்டு வந்தோம் முதலாவது வந்து உணர்ச்சிகள் என்ற பொழுது பலவிதமான கோபம் காதல் பரிப்பு போன்ற உணர்வுகளை ஒழிக்கப்படுத்தியிருப்பார் உதாரணமாக நாங்கள் கோபத்தை எடுத்துக்கொண்டால் இரண்டு பேர் சந்திக்கும் பொழுது அவர்கள் தாங்களுடைய கோபத்தை வெளிப்படுத்தும் பொழுது வெவ்வேறு வகையான அணுகுமுறைகளை கையாள்வார்கள் ஒரு அவர் ஒருவர் வந்து தனது கோபத்தை அடக்கி தனது உடல்நிலையை பாதிப்பார் மற்றவர் வெளிச்சமாக சொல்ல வேண்டியே சொல்வார் இதே என்னத்தை சொல்ல என்றால் அவரவர் தங்களுடைய உணர்ச்சிகளை தனித்துவமான முறையில் கையாளுகின்றார்கள் என்பதையே நான் இங்கே கூற விரும்புகின்றேன் என் உணர்ச்சிகள் வந்து ஒரு பல 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 கோணங்களில் பார்த்து எப்படி அணுகுகின்றோம்ன்றதை பற்றி நிச்சயமாக ஒரு சட்டம் வகிக்காமல் அவரவருக்கு ஏற்றபடி தனித்துவமாக மாறிக்கொண்டே போகும் என்பதுதான் இருக்கும் அடுத்தது வந்து இசையை வரும் பொழுது வந்து பொதுவாக வந்து இசையை வழங்குபவர்கள் அல்லது இசை அம இசை அமைப்பாளர்கள் தங்களுடைய கருத்துக்களை எப்படி எடுத்து செல்ல வேண்டும் என்று அவர் ஒவ்வொருவருக்கும் தனித்துவமான முறைகளை வழிகளை பயன்படுத்தி கொண்டிருக்கின்றார்கள் ஆகையினால் அடுத்தது வந்து இசை வந்து அது சூழலுக்கு ஏற்ப மக்களுக்கு ஏற்ப மொழிகளுக்கு ஏற்ப மாறிக்கொண்டே போகும் இதுதான் என்று நியதி இல்லை ஆகையினால அதில் ஒரு விதமான நெகிழ்வு தன்மை இருக்கின்றது இசையமைப்பாளர் எப்படி தனது கருத்தை அல்ல பா இசை பாடல் எழுதுபவர்கள் என்ன சொல்ல விரும்புகின்றார்களோ அவற்றை சார்ந்ததுதான் இசை என்பது நாம் புரிந்து கொள்ளக்கூடியதாக இருந்தது உதாரணமாக ரஷ்யாவில் சலின் ஆண்ட காலத்திலே கோவி சுண்டு இருப்பவர் இசையமைப்பாளர் இருந்தார் அவர்கள் பல பாடல்களை பாடினார் ஆனால் அந்த நேரத்தில் ஸ்டலின் தான் ஆட்சியின்படி ஒரு உல மக்கள் வந்து நாட்டை விரும்பினார்கள் என்ற ஒரு கருத்தை வெளியிலே இப்போ கொண்டு வேண்டும் என்று ஒவ்வொரு ஆழ்பவர்கள் தங்களுடைய கருத்தையும் அங்கே திணிக்க பார்க்கின்றார் பார்த்தார்கள் என்று முறை வகையில் அது சொல்லிக்கின்ற உடனே என்றால் சில நேரங்கள் எங்களுக்கு தெரியும் ஒவ்வொரு நாட்டிலையும் இசை வந்து மன்னர்களால் கையாளப்பட்டு தங்களுடைய கருத்துக்களை மற்றவர்களுக்கு பயந்து கொள்வதற்காக பாதிக்கப்பட்டது ஆனால் இங்கே என்ன கூற விரும்புகின்றேன் இசை என்பது வந்து அந்தந்த சூழலுக்கு அந்தந்த ஆட்சிக்கு ஏற்ற பாதித்தால் அமையும் என்பதைத்தான் சொல்லுகின்றேன் மற்றது ஒவ்வொரு பண்பாட்டுக்கும் ஒவ்வொரு விதமான பழக்க வழக்கங்கள் கலாச்சாரங்கள் இதில் இருக்கும் அவற்றை எடுத்து கூறுவதுதான் இசை என்பதுதான் நான் இறுதியாக கூற விரும்புகின்றேன் நன்றி இந்த வாய்ப்புக்கு நன்றி கூறிவிட வருகின்றேன் நன்றி வணக்கம் தேங்க்யூ வெரி மச் வண்டர்ஃபுல் டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் Half minute for Kumar Sami Pilla Master for the wonderful presentation. Thank you. So, just uh, anyone, anyone, anyone interested to say anything? Erin Devi Master, you want to say anything? Or? No, thank you very much, Erin, because you have brought so many different views from everybody all of the master they have given their views and uh, thank you so much and we would like to invite you again 
with different topic too, because the way you spoke it was very interesting. And as a young person, uh, and we would like to invite our uh, young uh, group uh, where, where the Tara master, she is the leader of our Tamil young, uh, sorry, this group uh, leader. English group. Oh, yes, yes, yeah, mm -hmm. English, English group anyway. So we would like you to join that. Then you can give your contribution to that group about your music and everything. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. You're already already in the group. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Thirumagan Master. Yeah, I hope he is here. I think uh, for anyway. Thank you for Eranan and Thirumagan Masters. Thank you very much. Uh, we now we conclude the session. So we'll see you again tomorrow. Uh, at night. Ulaga Amedicum, Samar de Guman, Alina Kuluviner, Padarmo, Presidium, Catatrale, Chichi, Munpo, Nipare, Canada.